Hi guys, how are y'all? Uh, it's Coach Garcia. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and work the review for the fall semester exam. Uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of jump around and try to work most of these problems. Um, I don't think I have enough time to work every single problem out of the 90. Um, today I'll work the first 45. Tomorrow I'll work on working the second 45. And again, I'm going to be jumping around. I will not work every single problem. Um, but remember, if you finish your review, um, and that means every single question is answered, you can uh, you get plus 14. Or, depending on what your teacher said, uh, points on your final. Um, so it's going to be a good idea to see if you can't finish this whole thing. And that just means don't skip any. Just make sure that you write something or at least attempt the problem for every single problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with number one. It says Sarah entered some data into her graphing calculator. She wanted to find an appropriate trend line. So she input the equation y equals x to see how fit the data how it fit the data. The results are shown. What changes should Sarah make to the equation y equals x in order for her trend line to fit the data better? Um, so right now that's her line that she has um, and there's her data and as you can see it doesn't really fit very well. Uh, a better fit for that line would be or that trend would be that line right there. So we have to figure out how do we go from that line to that line. Uh, Anytime that we're talking about lines, remember that we're talking about y equals mx plus b. Uh, so we're, we're going to go ahead and start with our b. Ooh, really out of focus. We're going to go ahead and start with our b. Uh, so b, that stands for my y-intercept. Uh, and basically, my y-intercept is where it crosses my y-axis, where it crosses this line right here. Um, so right now, it's crossing at 0, 0. Um, I can go ahead and increase my y-intercept so that it crosses about there. Um, I don't really have to say exactly where, um, but I can go ahead and say that it needs to be shifted up one, two, three, four. So we can go ahead and say y-intercept up four units. That'd be the first change. Uh, the second change, I guess I can go ahead and um, start modeling that. So there's my line. If I increase the y-intercept, that's what I just did to that line. So I increase where it started, uh, but it still has the same slope. So that it fits the data better, what I have to do is I have to change the slope. Sorry, change the slope and make it a little bit flatter. Um, so my next thing would be changing my slope, which is my m. And so my second change would be uh, make slope flatter. Um, and those are really the two changes that I would do to that line. Uh, numerical values are not really needed in this case, uh, even though I do have the four there. Uh, but just basically understanding that you have to lift the line, so you have to increase your y-intercept first, and then you have to decrease your slope or make your slope flatter. All right, we're going to jump to number six. Number six, it says the ratio of delta y over delta x is also called, uh, this is going to be rate of change. Um, so yes, it, technically you can write it out, delta y over delta x. This is also known as my rate of change or my slope. So anytime you see delta y over delta x, um, it's both of these. All right, number seven, it says, in the following statement, what is the dependent variable? My hair color depends on my genes. So dependent means what is it, you know, what's the thing that it's, that it has to depend on. So what is it depending on? Uh, so the thing here that we can't control is going to be our genes. Um, our genes, in turn, control our hair color. So my hair color, in this case, would be my dependent variable. Uh, my, my hair color depends on my genes. Uh, number eight, which of the following pairs of equations will not be parallel? Uh, so if we're talking about parallel lines, uh, we're talking about same slope. So then we go back to y equals mx plus b. Uh, so my slope has to be the same. Uh, different y-intercept. 
Uh, and th these are the two things that must happen. So that and that must happen for us to have parallel lines. And again, you can always graph these. Uh, so it says which of the following will not be parallel. I'm going to go ahead and start from the bottom. So we have 6x and 6x. So my steepness is 6. Um, one of them starts at negative 3. One of them starts at positive 4. Um, I guess I can really quickly go ahead and show you guys that these would... Uh, that these would uh, indeed work. So we can go ahead and go to y equals. We can type in 6x minus 3 and 6x plus 4. And we can go ahead and just see that they are parallel. So there's our first line. There's my second line. They're completely parallel. Um, again, the, the parallel part comes in where they're the same slope. So they're the same steepness. So this one has a 6. That one has a 6. Um, so basically, you just look at the number in front of your x. That one has a 14. That one has a 14. So that's going to be parallel. That's going to be parallel. Negative 3 and negative 3, those are going to be parallel. The only one that doesn't have the same is going to be a. So a is the only one that will not be parallel. All right, number 10, true or false. In the following sentence, the underlying phrase is the independent quality or quantity. All right, so it says how tired I am depends on how much sleep I got. Um, so again, this is a true or false. Um, it's basically figuring out, okay, does how tired you are, does that depend on how much sleep you got? And it does, so since how, the amount of tiredness, my fatigue, depends on how much sleep I got, then this would be my dependent. Um, and it, the thing that it depends on is going to be my independent, which is how much sleep I got the night before. Um, so it says, again, we go back to read our question. It says in the following sentence, the underlying phrase is the independent quantity. Um, and this is going to be false. False because the independent, the thing that I can't really control, is going to be how much sleep I got. My fatigue depends on how much sleep I got. All right, we jump over to 15. Which, which equation will graph will be an increasing line? Um, once again, we go back to our lines. We have y equals mx plus b. Uh, so for a line to be increasing, my slope, so an increasing line, my slope just has to be positive. So again, most of these questions are actually relatively easy or relatively simple. Uh, so basically, as long as I have a positive slope, then I have what we consider an increasing line. Um, so the only one that has a positive slope, so I can go ahead and circle all my slopes, the only one that has a positive slope is going to be B with a positive 2. All right, 16. Which of the following graphs shows a trend line that is the best, that best represents the data? Um, so basically, which of these lines, which of these data points has a line that best fits the data. Um, so you see how this line is just slightly off, like it really should be there. That would be a lot better of a line. Uh, same thing, this one's just slightly off. It should be just a little bit higher. Um, this one, same thing, it should, and it kind of curves. I don't really think that curve is really necessary. Um, and then D, D is going to be the only one that fits the graph pretty well. Um, so my answer here is going to be D. Flipping it over, 19. Write an equation with the graph that is parallel to the graph, y equals 7x minus 2. Um, so once again, parallel, we have same slope, different y-intercept. All right, so my slope again is my 7. My y-intercept is negative 2, so my equation would be y equals 7x, and then you just pick a number that's not minus 2. Uh, it can be positive, it can be negative, as long as my slope is the same, as long as that checks out and that checks out, um, I should have a line that is parallel. So same slope, different y-intercept. So we have y equals 7x, I'm just going to go ahead and say plus 5, just 
you know, for the heck of it, you can choose whatever you, number you want in there, and it would give you a line that's parallel. All right, 21, which of the following equations represents a vertical line? So vertical means a line going up and down. So if I have my graph like this, you know, if this is my grid, if this is my y-axis and that's my x-axis, a vertical line would be a line that goes straight up and down. Um, if I have that line go, that goes straight up and down, uh, a y equals will never be able to give me that line. Uh, so y equals can never give me that line. Uh, so my answer has to be x equals. And the way that we always write that, I can go ahead and just graph it for you guys right above this. Um, so right above this, I can go ahead and graph it for you guys. Um, the way that you would graph something like this for x equals 8, so for this equation right here, x equals 8, what I would do is I would go and I would count over to 8. So I would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on my x-axis. And x equals 8 would be this line right here. Going up like that. Again, that's the line x equals 8. has nothing to do with problem 20, um, but I just wanted to show you guys what that line would look like, x equals 8. Um, 23. Write an equation that represents a line having a slope m of negative 6 and a y-intercept b of 8. Um, so basically this tells me exactly what to plug in. It tells me what my m is, it tells me what my b is, and really all I do is just plug it into y equals mx plus b. Uh, so my m is going to be negative 6, so I can go ahead and rewrite that y equals negative 6x, uh, and my b is going to be an 8, and more importantly a positive 8, so that's going to be plus 8. And there's my equation. All right, 24. Sam wanted to graph the equation y equals 2x minus 7. She plotted her y-intercept point and started to count the slope. Which of the following should she do? Oops, come on, autofocus. 